Hello, boils and ghouls. So this is something different that I've wanted to do for a while now. And figured since I've already brought pretty much my two other forms of entertainment that bring me joy in life, music and gaming to the channel. So now it's just a whole hodgepodge of entertainment. Why not dive into some cryptids and some legends, urban legends and stuff like that? Which, when it comes to this, I've mentioned a few times in a few different videos, if it was pertaining to this subject, aliens, I am all for, I believe in 100%, I believe aliens are here on this planet, I believe they've been on this planet, it's a whole thing, we'll get into that down the line, but then you have stuff like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. And as fun as they are to entertain the ideas of, when you just look at the facts and just the, the likeliness of these things existing without being seen or captured on, fo on a photograph or a video or anything like that, and no compelling evidence whatsoever, it starts to become very hard to believe in these things. But there's a few out there of these legends and cryptids that have always fascinated me. And the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, is one, if not the number one, that has always grabbed my attention. Now, for people who don't know what the Mothman is, they made the movie The Mothman Prophecies based off of this whole legend. And it was basically this humanoid creature that was sighted in 1966, November, around November to December of the following year in 67. And people were seeing this creature all over the place in and around Point Pleasant, West Virginia. It looked and was described by dozens and dozens, and I'm talking over years, hundreds of people as a seven to nine, ten foot tall creature that had a wingspan of ten to fourteen plus feet and had glowing hypnotic eyes. And it looked like a big Mothman. <laughs> and that's where it got its name. Which also was, uh, the name was drawn from the Batman comics at the time that were very popular in the Batman show in the late 60s. And there was in one of the comics, there was a, a villain called Mothman. So it also came into it that way because they were calling it like bird creature and stuff at the beginning and like names that didn't stick. Mothman, that's a name for a cryptid. That sticks immediately. So when I look at any type of urban legend or something like this, I'm always very skeptic. I always try to look on the skeptical side and on the scientific side, and the common sense side, and logic, you know, all of these great things that most people don't seem to use today. But I'm like a mixture of Scully and Mulder from X-Files. Mix them together. I'm the one who is always skeptical, and always try to find a logical explanation, but God damn man do I want to believe and I want there to be a Mothman and I want there to be aliens and I want there to be Bigfoot like I want these things to exist I just don't know so let's dive into the whole backstory here of the Mothman see if we can try to figure out exactly what these people were seeing down there because one of the big ones that was thrown out as an idea an explanation for this was that they were seeing a sandhill crane or a, a certain type of heron. I'll get more into that because just the fact that hundreds of people reported have seen this thing and you just see that picture of the crane? <laughs> <laughs> this thing doesn't look like a 10 foot tall, you know, 7 to 10 foot tall, big ass bird man. Th that looks like a bird. <laughs> so that doesn't work for me. That is, it's like the, that's pretty much the UFO equivalent being th its swamp gas. Th 
doesn't work for me. The hundreds of people, none of them were able to... No, that's just a crane, bro. Like, I live here in West Virginia. Like, I, I hunt cranes and shit. That, that's a crane. No one was able to say that. That is just a stupid excuse. But there are things that can lend a little bit of credence to the crane theory. And we'll get into that, too. So let's talk the Mothman of Point Pleasant. The best place to start? Why not right at the beginning? So, the first sighting of the Mothman was on November 15th, 1966, and we had two young couple from Point Pleasant, Roger and Linda Scarberry, and we had Steve and Mary Mallet. They had an encounter outside of the town of Point Pleasant by the TNT area, which is uh, the site of a former uh, munitions plant from the World War II era, which keep that in mind because that plays into a decent amount of theories too with what the Mothman can be but the Mallet couple and the Scarberries they saw this large creature whose eyes glowed red standing at the side of the road near the TNT area and they also described it as slender muscular like a man but about seven feet tall and she wasn't able to tell the face because of the hypnotic effect of the eyes. The red eyes is the thing that you hear in every single report of the Mothman sighting. It's just the glowing red eyes. that It's almost trance-like. Which is another thing that goes against the whole Sand Hill Crane thing for me. Again, picture, see? Yeah, those aren't glowing eye, even in the dark. Come on, like that, it doesn't work for me. So the two couples, they were chased by this creature all the way back into the Point Pleasant city limits, back into town, going about almost 100 miles per hour. And they were saying that this creature was keeping up with the car almost the entire way. And then it just disappeared. And over the next few days, more people started coming out with similar sightings, saying they saw a large bird with red eyes, and that's where it just blossomed from there. There started to be dozens upon dozens of sightings in that year from this first date, 1966, November 15th, with Scarberry and the Mallets, up until the collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967, which plays a big role into this whole legend as well. Now, the Silver Bridge was a suspension bridge that was built in the 20s, 1928, and it connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia, with uh, Gallipolis, Ohio. And in December 15, 1967, it collapsed. They don't know what caused the collapse. They eventually found out, and I'll get into it, that it was a screw that could have come loose. But this even led more credence to the sightings of the Mothman. People claimed to have seen the Mothman in the days right before the bridge collapsed, flying around the bridge. People claimed to see the Mothman on the bridge the day that it collapsed, when it collapsed. So, was it a, was it a bad omen? Was it there to warn the citizens of uh, Point Pleasant that there's going to be this disaster? Was it the cause of the bridge collapse? Is it just a mass delusion from everybody in this town? These are all great things to discuss, and we're going to get into all of that. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know if it's going to be a long-ass episode or if I'll do this episodically. I don't know. This is probably going to get cut up a whole bunch and edited all over the place so who knows but what really makes this whole legend and this whole case here interesting even more so for me it's not just the mothman here like when you and i've looked into this case a, a decent amount of hours over my life like i, I like i said i love this type of shit there's, there was. It's not just the Mothman. There were UFO sightings and lights in the sky and stuff seen all around and in Point Pleasant right around the time of the Mothman sighting started. And ever since then, there are still a whole bunch of sightings of UFOs in that area. 
it seems like a UFO hotspot. There were men in black who came to Point Pleasant and started telling citizens to stop reporting what they're reporting. And so just we have men in black here. We have UFOs. We have lights in the sky. We have a cryptid bird man, moth man thing. <laughs> it, it, there's so much to this. And it's so fun to think about and unravel. So now let's go back even further. Further than the first documented reported sighting of this Mothman on the 15th of November in 66. Way back to the curse of Chief Cornstalk. What, JT? This thing has a Mothman, UFOs, men in black, and now there's an Indian curse? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, I'm not kidding you one bit. There's a curse of Indian Chief Cornstalk here. Now, Chief Cornstalk was a Shawnee Indian leader in the late 1700s or so. And to make a long story short, he ended up getting killed. And there's this whole legend around him that he left a curse on the land. And I believe his grave was rediscovered and his remains were moved to the Mason County Courthouse grounds. And when the courthouse was torn down, then Cornstalk was reburied at the site of the Battle of Point Pleasant. That led to the whole curse of Chief Cornstalk. That this was his land, and that his revenge was sending the Mothman in the 60s, for some reason, decades later, <laughs> to go mess with Point Pleasant. So, to me, this is just urban legend. This is just story mixed with history like there was a uh, chief cornstalk he existed he was a real person but that's where it ends for me it's just a story he died sure you want to say he left a curse you know how many fucking indians died all over the country this whole place will be cursed maybe that's why the world's how it is now <laughs> maybe it's old native american curses finally coming back to haunt us now just to give some shed some light on who's in, involved here in Point Pleasant and the people who were seeing the Mothman in the late 60s. These aren't the type of people that want to go on record saying they've seen some crazy stuff. These are just small town American people. They're hard workers they just want to live their life, you know, enjoy their life, and they live a simple life. They're not the type of people that are just going to go out and say some shit and make it up just for, for 15 minutes of fame. That's not the type of people here. And you could see it. And if you look up on the Mothman, you look into all this, you see documentaries, you probably see the same people that are interviewed several, several times. They're all locals. These are people that have had their names established in this town for generations. These are people that were well-respected in their town. These are people that aren't sham art. They're not scam artists. They're not trying to make a quick buck. They're not trying to be famous for discovering some weird stuff. This is some weird, unexplained phenomena that they experienced, that they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what they experienced. They didn't know what they saw. And they didn't know how to handle it from there. And they just ended up reporting their sightings of what they saw. Now, they have a Mothman Museum in Point Pleasant run by Jeff Wamsley. He owns this Mothman Museum that you can go in and see all, like, sighting reports and artist sketches and everything like that. They have a huge statue of the Mothman in the center of town in Point Pleasant. So, I mean, you can't argue one thing. I mean, this has been great for tourism for Point Pleasant. <laughs> like, they have a, a festival every single year, a Mothman festival. So, brings in some nice tourism. Like, you can't deny that. Now, there was a woman named Mary Heyer 
who worked at the paper, I think I want to say, she started taking in all the accounts and sightings from people who have seen the Mothman, who are seeing strange lights in the sky, who are seeing UFOs. This was being seen all the time in Point Pleasant and around it. Mary Heyer herself was even visited by two men in black right around or right after the bridge collapse in 67 of the Silver Bridge and was told to stop reporting you know, these sightings and stop documenting everything and to stop talking about this. So right there is something weird. Then we have more crazy stuff with Indrid Cold, which is a whole nother thing. So this is probably going to be an episodic thing, <laughs> like as I go through this. I'll see how the initial reaction is to a shorter video here, and then we'll go into more and more parts of this whole entire huge story in the coming days. Now, welcome to the TNT area outside Point Pleasant, which I said earlier was a munitions plant in the Second World War. Now, this area is known for having uh, severe chemical spills into the ground from the munitions plant and everything, and all the chemicals and all the work and stuff that they, was, they were doing there during World War II seeped deep into the ground. So... The whole Sandhill Crane theory from earlier, like I said, this is a Sandhill Crane. This don't, that don't look like the Mothman here, <laughs> is the way everyone describes it. There's no way people are making that mistake. Now, there's a theory that it could have been a Sandhill Crane or a Heron or some type of bird like that that was mutated from living in the TNT area that was has all these chemicals deep in the ground. Who knows what type of mutations could have happened. Now that's one theory on the skeptical side that I'll that I put a pin in and I hold on to. Because it is possible. It's a logical explanation. It makes sense. This isn't something that people imagined. We can throw that right out people actually saw something hundreds of people to this day have seen something so we can put that right out that this is a hoax we can throw it right out that this was just people losing their mind like a group delusion and seeing things that weren't there there was definitely something now was it a crane a regular ass crane like that fucker right there again no <laughs> not I, I, I refuse to believe that many people confuse that with that. I refuse to believe it. So, the whole mutated crane does have a little bit of credence to it. It does have science on its side. It does have logic on its side. That if this crane, or maybe there was multiple of them that were living in the TNT area... They became mutated, and this is what they were seeing. But it's still a crane. It still doesn't look like everything that all these eyewitnesses were describing that they're seeing. And the biggest thing being the eyes. Now, of course, you could see that the crane does have the red around the eyes. But that's not glowing trance-like red eyes. And all the darkness in the world isn't going to make <laughs> the, the red on his face, on that crane, look like it's a trance-like alien-type eyes. So that's another thing there that doesn't make sense with the whole crane thing. Even if it was mutated, again, who knows what type of mutations. So, I mean, could he have glowy eyes? Who knows? It's still on the side of reason. It's still on the side of science in some way. But I did hear a theory once that was quite interesting. Speaking of all the chemicals and everything in the TNT area and how infested that area is, a lot of those chemicals can have hallucinogenic effects 
on people. Now that always struck me as something that could make sense. Now if these people are seeing this creature, and the, most of the accounts are in or around the TNT area, not all of them, I mean there's been a whole, and like I said, there's so much more that we have to dive into here with the alien sightings and intrad cold and, and the, the, all the UFO stuff and then the men in black goes on more, there, there's so much. This is like a little teaser appetizer uh, trailer for this little mini-series I'll be doing. But, the ones that were in the TNT area, it could be possible that they were affected by the chemicals that were seeped into the ground after all these years. Could have brought about hallucinogenic effects, which mix that with a sandhill crane that's actually there, and <laughs> throw that together with somebody who's unknowingly going you know, hallucinating from the chemicals, that can make sense. There is a nice little explanation there, except it doesn't explain everything. It doesn't come close to explaining everything. Just the fact that Scarberries, the Scarberries and the Mallets were driving back to Point Pleasant when that first initial sighting and they said that they were being chased back into town 100 miles per hour. They weren't, they're in a car. They're not touching the ground. They're not in the TNT area and stuff. They're not being affected by chemicals. So that is one interesting theory that maybe can account for a few sightings, maybe a dozen, a few dozen, who knows. But it doesn't account for everything. So that's another theory that I can throw out right there. So what could the Mothman be? Is it a creature, an actual physical being, some like a Bigfoot or like a Loch Ness monster that just, or a Jersey Devil that we just never discovered? It's just a weird new species of creature we never discovered. A cryptid, <laughs> basically. That's one theory. Is it of alien origin? That's another big theory. And we'll go into that in the next episode on this, which will go into all the UFO activity that was going around, going on at the time of before the bridge collapsed with all the Mothman sightings and everything since then. All the stuff with Indrid Cold, which if you don't know that, who that is or what it is, it's basically an extraterrestrial, supposedly, who visited a man and gave him premonitions and stuff like that it's the whole thing so we'll get into intra cold the aliens all that stuff in the next episode but either extraterrestrial in origin or alternate dimension and that's another thing that's fascinating to me just having things all around you look at like uh Stuart Gordon's From Beyond and, and so much of Lovecraft stuff but like in From Beyond when they're using the the machine that he built and he could see all the stuff the the creatures flying around and that's what's really in our air and like the what around us but we just can't see it it's in a different plane of existence so is this mothman from a different plane of existence and every so often maybe there's different hot spots across the world, you know, paranormal hotspots or openings in time or dimension or space that would lead into another dimension or that would bring something out of another dimension. And could this be where Mothman comes from? I think that's a little bit of intrigue enough right here, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the Mothman. Let me know if you're from West Virginia and if you've ever seen the Mothman, if you've ever had any relatives, friends who have had an actual sighting, I would love to hear all that. And like I said, we have a lot to dive into here. This is a half hour. <laughs> Expect like five or six more episodes of these. But this is something I've wanted to cover for a while. And the Jersey Devil is another one. So we'll get into that one also down the line. But let me know how this came out. Let me know if you guys are interested in this type of stuff. And, um, yeah, we'll move forward talking with more Mothman of Point Pleasant. 
Take care, guys. Thank mm-hmm. you.